This is Don with Virtual 360 Images. Today we're going to talk about removing objects from the background. Some of them merely objects off to the side that distracts from your pictures. Some of them are behind, say, an object or a person in the foreground, and you'd like to get rid of that. I've split this up into two uh, videos. This is part one, and then there's also a part two that I will uh, finish and uh, look for that next. I'm going to work with a couple different tools that I haven't worked with on videos before. One is called Fill. I'm also going to be using uh, Quick Selection, Lasso. Most of the time when I try to remove backgrounds or remove objects, either way, I do a lot of it with the cloning tools, healing tool, and or uh, the cut and paste. This one we're going to do a little bit different. The picture I got on the screen right now is a picture I took uh, on one of our field trips with our camera club. The people off to the left side of the picture, we have absolutely no idea who they are, and to me they kind of distract from the rest of the picture. I do tell people when you start working with editing tools, you may do it two or three times. I also tell people, first of all, never edit the original because if you screw it up, you screw it up. But I also know from this one that uh, I have edited it a couple times and I'm picking up a pink glare out of it when I do go ahead and uh, remove those objects. It's coming from her pink bag that she is picking up shells with. So I backed off on it one time and uh, went ahead and over to my palette over on the one side, uh, I changed that to black. I also uh, picked the paintbrush, come back over here. I painted the bag black to try to eliminate the pink glare. At the same time, I just kind of went up and did a little bit more. I don't know if I picked some of that up from, from uh, her face or what. I'm not quite sure, but like I said, sometimes when you're working with software, you have to do it a couple different ways. The other thing that uh, before I start off with any of these, even though I did start there, is we're going to work with layers, quite a bit with layers on this one. And the first thing you really want to do is come over here to the right-hand side where it says background. Now, you can use a right button, and it'll say duplicate layer. The other one I found that works quicker than anything is the control J. Now I've got one called layer one and we're going to work off of layer one. That way we won't uh, mess up the original. We can always come back. What I said we were going to work with is we're going to start out with this one. We're going to use the fill. But first of all, we've got to go around that picture and I'm going to go over here on the left side and grab the lasso tool. If you haven't worked with it, what I could do is draw a complete line around my object. The thing you cannot do is let go of the mouse. Once you press on the mouse, you have to continue to press on the mouse until you get all the way back around to where you touch it. Now, as, as I come down around that, as you can see, I don't have to come in and follow directly next to the object. I can leave a gap. What this uh, fill is going to do is take a look at all the pixels around it and then fill in behind it when it removes this particular object. A little nervous there. There's days that I wished I had a draw pad rather than the mouse. I actually do better with a mouse and I do with the touchpad. I mean, I'm talking about a drawing pad because I'm working off of a laptop. There's days I would think I should have a draw pad there. As you can see, it selected the area all the way around them. I'm going to back it out just a little bit. Now, to use the fill tool, you come up to the word edit. In the drop-down, you'll see Fill Selection. 
Always make sure the use of it is the content aware. You've got other choices in there, but stay with content aware. Leave the mode under normal. You'll see if I pop it down, there's a number of other applications in there, but we leave that on normal. The transparent, I've run it with and without. It doesn't seem to make any difference. At this point, all we're going to do is go up and click on OK, and we're going to wait. And it's gone. Now, to get rid of the dotted line around my object, the quickest way I do that is I go over to the left, I click on the rectangle tool, come over, and just touch anywhere on the screen. I'm not going to draw anything, I'm just going to click on the screen. From there, you can see that we pretty much got rid of all of it. There might be a little bit of touch up you might have to do. I look down here, I look for critical places that for me, I didn't really come out too bad. I'm going to use the cloning tool. I get a little fussy once in a while. And I'm going to come back over here now, even though I'm still in layer one. Hold down the Alt key. Press the left mouse button. Come over here just a little bit. And maybe just add a little bit to that water line along the beach. And that's about all I'm going to have to do to that. I'll come back up here to my minus. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back down. Very, very simple. This is one that I took a number of years ago. I used to shoot quite a bit for Southwest Florida lacrosse. This happened to be a sterile high school girls uh, lacrosse. And the same thing here. Uh, I could take the cloning tool and work this girl out of there. It would take me a little more time because I have to be a little more detailed about it, the different color grasses and stuff like that. I found the filler tool worked very, very well on this one. Again, go over here to the right, click on the blue, hold down the control, hit the J. Now, I've got a layer, layer one. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to get my lasso tool. And I'm going to try to get up here towards the top, right on the edge. And I'm going to start right around her head, come back down this way, up around her racket. Remember, we do not have to get in as close as what you may think. Down along her leg, underneath her foot, behind her leg, back off of the edge of the pitcher, come right back up to the top, and attach the line at the top. Now, I should only have to go in here to edit, come down to fill, and she's gone. I'll come over here to the rectangle, click once on the rectangle, click one place in the center of the screen. She's gone. I don't think I could fix that any better than what it is right now. Now if we go back to the other side here on the layers, I can turn that on and off, on and off. So you can see what it's actually done for that picture. I removed that object completely out of there. And at that point, you can go up here. You, you can save it as a project. Save as. You most generally would like to save your stuff as a PSD file. That way, if you want to come back in and make some corrections to that particular one, you can. At the same time, if you go to save as, down here uh, underneath the name, come down, pick up the one that says JPEG, and save it as a JPEG. You can also save it as a GIF file, and there's some others in there too, uh, PNG, and close that out. I'm going to move on here in a few minutes into the next one. It's going to be part two. It's uh, another one that's got three people in it and a, and a car. They're standing along the edge of the street, and I want to get that car and a parked car out from behind them. So a little bit different than this. I hope you learned something out of this. Uh, if you get a chance, subscribe to us and uh, 
be sure to watch the next one. And uh, I thank you for taking the time to look at this one.